Shalom, shalom. This is your brother Shamak out of the Great Millstone Atlanta camp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory. Infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rachak Wadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name and His only begotten Son's true name being Yahweh Shai, both in the Hebrew language, whom the world incorrectly calls God and Jesus Christ. Also, and to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who teach and rule well, and who are the true leaders of the Hebrew Israelites within these last days. Also, and to give a shalom to all the sincere brothers that's put your teachings truth worldwide, and shalom to all you sincere listeners and you sincere believers. All right, thought to come with the lesson concerning Samson. All right, within the book of Judges, specifically the chapters thirteen through sixteen, and remembering and highlighting Samson, a righteous judge of Israel. Okay. Of about 20 years okay so highlighting you know uh, a righteous hebrew israelite man a righteous forefather okay renowned men as the scriptures speak about okay and i wanted to first uh begin by reading this uh luke chapter 10 verse 19 all right because uh one you know this general characteristic that samson was blessed with was physical strength all right Physical strength and the power of the Lord is, is going to be given to his sincere servants and his sincere believers within these last days today. All right. That's why we are to remember, remember and highlight these uh, accounts of our forefathers, because this power is coming back within these last days right now in the time right now. OK, before Yahweh Shah returns. All right. So this is Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. All right. Verse 10. These are those that, that, that the Lord is dealing with. Truly the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. Verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And Lord willing we be a part of that number that is preordained and predestined to be delivered within in these last days. All right. That, mean, that would mean your name is written in heaven, man. All right, written, written, written in the book of life. Okay. So, from now I want to grab uh, Judges, <laughs> Judges chapter um, thirteen. Okay, Judges chapter thirteen. Let me exit this out. So this is Judges chapter thirteen, just to start with the birth of Samson. Okay. And it reads Judges chapter thirteen, verse three. And if I'm not mistaken, Samson in the Hebrew tongue would be uh, pronounced Shemashawan. All right, meaning like the sun. All right, this is show that light. Okay, this is Judges chapter thirteen, verse three, and it reads, "And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son." So yeah, she was barren. She wasn't able to receive, you know, uh, have a, have a child. All right, but the Lord, but the angel of the Lord made it possible. A hey, all right, it says, "And bearest not." But thou shalt conceive and bear a son And now therefore beware I pray thee And drink not wine nor strong drink And eat not any unclean thing For lo thou shalt conceive and bear a son And no razor shall come on his head For the child shall be a Nazarite unto the most high From the womb And he shall begin to deliver Israel Out of the hand of the Philistines Alright So this was obviously in the time Where the Philistines were oppressing the Israelites Yes the Philistines going into the uh, Under the family branch of you Hamites, which are Africans, you know, which would be known as Africans today, as the modern term, okay. But the Nazarite vow includes it with the no, no, uh, no strong drink, no wine, no, no, uh, cutting of the hair. All right, mentioning what the law of the Nazarites within Numbers chapter six. All right, and it mentions these few things of how he shall separate. I'm gonna start at verse two. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them. When either man or woman shall separate themselves to to a, to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquors of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. So this was this was uh Samson was a Nazarite. All right. This was this was our, this was vowed to him from birth. Okay, verse five. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled. Yeah, until death. <laughs> it says, in the which he separated himself unto the Lord. See, you're holy. You're separate. You're not like the other Israelites. 
He says, He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair, and shall let the locks of his hair, of the hair of his head grow. All right. So yeah, that's going to show, and that's going to it's going to all make sense within the book of Judges of how of the reason why he was given that strength truly because he kept was was uh in the midst of sustaining and keeping the the vow unto the Lord. That's what it was truly about. All right. But once that vow was broken, we'll we'll see we'll see exactly what happened, man. All right. So back to Judges chapter thirteen verse five. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto the Most High from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So yeah, that was the that this was the will of the Lord for Samson to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Okay, out of the hand of the heathen, man. Okay, so this is Judges chapter thirteen. The same way in the last days that we're, that we're speaking about now, the Lord is is, is waking up the 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 true prophets and the true men of the Lord to lead our people. All right, to lead our people, man. All right. So this is uh, I'm going down within the chapter, uh, Judges chapter thirteen, verse twenty-four. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. So yeah, we can I can get that in the Hebrew real quick, <clears throat> just to confirm the meaning of his name. All right. Samson pronounced Shemasha one. Yes, yeah, Shemasha one. Okay. Meaning like the sun, all right. It says, it says a judge of Israel for twenty years. Okay, so yeah, it says what a Israelite. Okay, this is our forefather, man. This is our this is our true history. Okay, involving Samson, involving the book of Judges. Okay, we had wicked judges and we also had righteous judges. Samson happened to be one of those righteous judges. All right. So going back up, and just to go to, really to the next chapter. Let me go back. All right, so Judges. Let me go to the next chapter. Judges chapter fourteen, uh, verse two. Just to go, just to um, go through his quest and his journey. All right. So this is Judges chapter fourteen. I'm gonna go to verse two. And he came up and told his father and his mother, and said, "I have seen a woman." So this, of course, is when he was grown of age. All right. I have seen a woman in some in some of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brother? Yeah, they you know they want they want him to marry an Israelite, but he was on a mission, and it's going to explain that. It says, Or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, and for she pleases me well. Verse 4. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. Yeah, to make them weak. Once that alliance is formed, he, he's able to break those bridges, you know, is that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Yeah, we, they, were, they had us in slavery. All right. We were in cap. We were, we were in the Philistine captivity. All right. The same way you had David fight against uh, Goliath, that great Philistine. All right. Verse five. It reads, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Tanath and came to the vineyards of Tanath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Verse six, and this and this, and this is going this showing this is going to show the power of Samson. This is going to show the power of dealing with the Lord truly and believing and serving Yahweh by Shem All right, verse six says, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Yeah, he killed, he killed, murdered. Slaughtered the slaughtered the lion like it was a, like it was a little kid, man. Like it was nothing. All right, taking candy from a baby, literally. All right. <laughs> so going on down in the um, let's skip over in the in the uh, going on further down in the chapter. All right, Samson uh had a riddle that involved that lion. Okay. Uh yeah, that in, that involved the mur the <clears throat> the the killing of that lion. All right, and mentioned. To the Philistines, if you if y'all can't solve this, man, y'all I'm gonna I'm gonna put y'all to uh, death as well. All right, because the Lord's will was to have, have Samson, you know, deliver the nation of Israel out of the Philistines' hands, man. All right. So this is Judges chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. 
have ye called us to take that we have? It is not so. All right, so yeah, they, you know, the Philistines trying to entice uh, his wife. All right, <laughs> entice his wife to to let you know tell them the riddle. Okay, verse sixteen. And Samson's wife wept before him and said, "Thou doest but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, yet yeah, the Philistines, and has not told it unto me." And he said unto her, "Behold, I have not told it unto my father or my mother, and I should tell it unto thee." See, I can really skip on down. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Verse, I'm gonna go to that verse 18. All right, and it reads, "And the men of the city said unto him on the because she end up, she basically end up, you know, telling telling them the riddle. All right, the meaning of the riddle. It says, "And the men of the city said unto him until the seventh day before the sun went down." What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye not have plowed with my heifer, ye have not found out my riddle. So yeah, if you if y'all didn't go, you know, behind my back and try to discuss, you know, and try to plead for my riddle, you know, you would have never found out. So that it really doesn't even count. <laughs> Verse nineteen. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ascalon and slew thirty men of them, as he said he would do if they wouldn't solve the riddle correctly. It says, and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to the to his father's house. Verse 20, but Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Okay, so yeah, just going. This, so that power, that power of Samson's being shown, slaying, slaying 30 men, all right, uh, renting, uh, slaughtering the lion like it was nothing. This is the power that the Lord blessed Samson with. All right, going on with uh to the next chapter. All right, this is the highlight. This is a, this is truly the highlight key points. Going on down to uh, Judges chapter fifteen, verse verse eleven. I'm gonna start at verse eleven. All right, it reads Judges chapter fifteen verse eleven. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Itam and said to Samson. Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto them. So yeah, you know the Israelites, you're gonna you're always gonna have those Israelites that are doubting the cause, that are doubting the mission. Do you not do you not understand that we're under the, the, the Philistines kept you making it harder on this? Alright, but did not understand that this was this was all the will of the Lord. Alright. Verse twelve. This is just as we're it's the will of the Lord for us to be prophesying against this these great kingdoms and these great uh against against these Edomites, all right, that we're in, right now a, a subject unto. All right. Verse 12. It's and they said <clears throat> verse 12, and they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. So yeah, they like, man, nah, we about to just we're gonna deliver you up, man. We're gonna take you to him, man. All right, you making it you making life harder on us. All right. <laughs> It says, and Samson said unto them, swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. So he like, I know y'all not about to try to kill me, your, your, your damn self. All right. Verse 13. And they spake unto him saying, no, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they shall bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. So yeah, look, Samson like, oh, that's fine. All right. Verse 14. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from his hands. So he, like it was nothing. Break them off like it was. <laughs> Samson, man, when they shouted against Samson, because, you know, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and pissed him off. You, uh, he, he was vexed, man. He was irritated. Okay, he was offended. All right? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. It's all that's the key that's the key thing. The spirit of the Lord. Not his own will. Not because he wanted to do it. It was all the spirit of the Lord. Alright, Judges chapter 15, verse 15. And he found a new jawbone. This was and this this is a classic. This is a classic historical event. The jawbone with Samson. He says he fought he found a new jawbone of it. It just shows the the uh the physical strength, the blessing. It says he found a new jawbone of an ass of a donkey and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. A thousand men. This shows you that the power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai is truly not with numbers. Samson took out a thousand. All right. So the so the Lord doesn't need numbers within these last days, man. He doesn't need all the Israelites to wake up. He only needs his his elect, man. His remnant. All right. His sincere believers. All right. Verse sixteen. And Samson said. 
with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. See, let it be known. Verse 17, it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramaphliha. All right. Verse 18. And he was sore thirst and called and called on the Lord and said, thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Yeah, so he, he was obviously at the putting forth that ass whooping, man. All right. Samson was clearly not even wasn't just tired. He was exhausted. OK, but of course, the Lord blessed him man. the Lord got him. Verse 19, the same way the Lord is going to protect us and help us in a day of trouble within these last days. If we be of that number, if we if we be if our names are written in that book of life, if our names are written in heaven, if we're predestined. All right. To be delivered. The Lord will will help us out. OK, exactly as is mentioned in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 65, what verse 13. All right. Of how his servant shall eat, his servant shall drink. All right. He said his servant shall rejoice. While the others shall shall go of hunger, shall be of thirst, and shall be ashamed, man. Okay, verse nineteen. It says, "But the Most High clave and hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Where wherefore he called the name thereof Echakor, Echakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years." All right, 20 years, okay? A righteous judge of Israel, okay? So here comes about Samson's downfall, you know? Samson's downfall came about in, uh, in the book of Judges, chapter 16. All right, so really starting at, uh, oh, here it is. Of course, through the woman. This is Judges, chapter 16, verse 4. Through her, we all die, <laughs> as the scriptures speak about. All right, but it was all the Lord's will. This is all the Lord's will, okay? Judges, Judges chapter 16, verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak, whose name was Delilah. All right. And the Lord and the lords of the Philistines came unto her and said unto her, entice him and see where in his great strength life. Yeah, because they understood, man, it's no, it's no, it's no breaking Samson, man. This is a man of the Lord. It's no, it's no breaking it unless you break the power, his power. Okay. His faith, his obedience. Okay. It says, and, by, and, what, and what was that obedience we read about in Numbers chapter 6? That, that, that Nazarite vow. That's, why the, that's how the Lord was blessing him through that Nazarite vow, man. That's how the Lord was dealing with him, okay? It says, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give the, every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. So they trying, they trying to pay her off. That's what they trying to do. Dead law that is, all right, his wife. So this is Judges chapter 16. I'm going down to, uh, yeah, yep, this is it. the point. Deadly law extracts his secret, all right? Judges chapter 16, verse 15. So like, it reads, and she said unto him, Has, How canest thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, because three times she asked Samson, she, you know, she was wondering, she like, okay, so what's, you know, what's, your, what's the big, what's, where, where does your strength, where does your strength come from, you know? He he lied to her. He lied to her three times, man. All right, and she's like, "Damn, you you know you don't really love me." You know, putting forth that woman talk. But Samson he lied to her three times and says, "And has not told me where in thy great strength life, because it lied within." It's going to explain it. It's going to explain it. Verse sixteen, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. He was highly irritated, highly irritated, man. So he said, "Man, damn, fuck." It. He got he got weak. Verse seventeen, that he told her all his heart. It truly was in his his mind. The heart, you know, lob in the Hebrew being mine. He said unto her, "There have not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto the Most High from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man." So yeah, he he probably didn't even meant there to explain it, you know. And it, you know, to to it, you know, explain it all to her, man. But it, it came out. He got weak. All right, verse eighteen. And when and Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, so she like, oh, he really told me this time. You know, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, "Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart." Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. 
Verse 19, and she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. So yeah, she caused him somehow, somehow, some way, influenced Samson to cut his hair, man. And that, and it was done. That was it after that, man. Verse twenty. You know, let me skip over. Let me, let me go down. Judges chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three. <clears throat> then the lords of the Philistines gathered, gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their power. And to rejoice for they said Our power have delivered Samson Our enemy into our hand Knowing damn well The only reason that happened Was because y'all paid off Delilah That was the only damn reason Y'all oh Dagon you're so great But with, let's continue to read It says when the people saw him They praised their power For they said our power had delivered Into our hands our enemy And a destroyer of our country Which slew many of us Yeah Samson just slew He killed man he killed thousands Thousands of Philistines, man. Verse 25. And they hated him for it. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they called, that they said, call for Samson. See, so yeah, they hearts merry. They drunk. They all, you know, loose as a goose. Call for Samson that he may, that he may make a sport. So, yeah, they want to they wanted make fun, have fun, you know, have fun with him. And they called Samson, called for Samson out of the prison house. And he, and he made them sport. And they set them, set him between the pillars. So yeah, they got him, they got him tied up on the pillars, man. Like like how was shot on the cross or something, man. Verse sixteen. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof. Of about three thousand men and women, so these weren't just regular Philistines. These were these were top these were top men, all right, leaders of the Philistines that beheld while Samson made sport. Verse twenty eight, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, "O Lord, power, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once." So the Lord, because Samson understood that he went off, all right, that you know that he uh did where this was you know he went off from the Nazarite vow. All right, but he said only this once, O power. It says that I may be at once avenged of the of the Philistines for my two eyes. Yeah, because you know they uh, you know they torture torture his eyes, man. Okay, verse nineteen. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on the which it was borne up of the one with his right hand, on the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might in the house. So, yeah, he leaned forward, pulling the pillars down, man. All right. Pillars that hold up a huge, uh, like a huge mass uh, mansion. All right. Think upon the, the, the White House pillars. It says that he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. Remember, it's 3,000 Philistines in here, man. All right. They're going out sad. It says, so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. See? <laughs> Verse 31. Then his brother and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Esther in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. So this was the blessing that was given to Samson. All right. Samson was a, a righteous, a righteous man of the Lord of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. And once the, and once that uh vow was broken, that Nazarite vow was broken, the, the that strength was taken from him. But it was all the Lord's will. That was that was for that was for how his walk was meant to go. All right. And ultimately, the Philistines were you know were taken down, man. Just to, just to highlight, all right, and reminisce on the account of Samson, man, of how of how great power and strength they knew, and it all came from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It was all a gift. It was something you couldn't buy. All right, you couldn't finesse. All right, it was all a gift from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Likewise, it is of the gift of faith within these last days, man. All right, in, in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as sincere servants and believers, all right, with whom are also what Hebrew Israelites. Okay, so Lord willing, uh, oh, let me read. Let me read. This is Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-one. It shows this scripture here. Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-one. What shall we then say to these things? If the Most High be for us. Who can be against us? All right. 
If the Lord is on our side, the Lord is dealing with us, who can be against us? All right, as he was for Samson. All right, slewing a thousand. Just one one man taking down thousands of Philistines, man. Brought down the pillars and killed three thousand at one time. All right. The scriptures speak about that we shall that one man shall take chase a thousand. All right, and that in that five men shall what chase ten thousand, showing the power of the Lord is coming within these last days. All right, such as like um, to the point of like uh, the power of Samson is coming. All right, spiritual powers, man. All right, so Lord willing, this lesson was you know edifying and also encouraging to you sincere believers and you sincere listeners. I went all by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Repent. Yahweh Shah is coming back. Repent. Yahweh Shah is coming back. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Keep the faith.